your research, um, your research objectives can be very, very specific, right? The example that I gave in the first half of participatory action research, if I can say that properly, um, with two de varying degrees of research, um, PAR research, um, having to do with sort of gang violence in an urban community. You have one PAR research model, which um, might not be as involve intensive, right? It might not be, it might not have um, as high a degree of involvement as another. So for example, we might say we're gonna mitigate gang violence in a community by building a rec center. Okay, sure, that's great PAR research. Another PAR research might be that I am um, going to speak with uh, gang members themselves, current former gang members themselves, um, and as uh, my participants are going to be, uh, have specifically been selected as all current or former gang members, and collectively, um, myself and all of these current and former gang members are going to, because who better to think about what you need in order to make the place better uh, and to get me off the streets than the people who are on the streets. But that's not some, I mean, that's, that's intense research. That's intense research. You're not, you know, that's a very, very deep level of involvement. Not only is it a very, very deep level of involvement, this is very, very specific research that I'm doing, right? It's context specific. So depending on the interests of the researcher and the needs of the community, it's not just the, the interests of the, the researcher. It is sort of the consolidation of the interests of the researcher with, alongside, the needs of the community. You can really have a highly, highly context-specific PAR research model. Um, and you might be able you know, to uncover something brand new. Uh, there was something that I, I heard on NPR where someone's doing PA, uh, participatory action research with an attempt to um, create a resurgence of Native American languages in the U.S. because the Native American languages are, are, are dying out um, and um, practitioners are, are getting older and they're not communicating the, the language. And I'm not sure if it's all languages. It might have been like one specific language. I forget where it is, but I heard it on NPR. And I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty highly context-specific participatory action research. We've identified what the problem is. We know where the community is. Um, you can immerse yourself, involve yourself in the community, and uh, along with the community, come about um, making assessments and outcomes uh, and trying to, you know, try, I guess obviously the, the conclusion of the research is to increase, it would be like an awareness model of uh, participatory, awareness slash education, the fourth model of participatory action research. So, on and on and on. Okay. Uh, number three. Three. Um... Facilitates quote, and this is a quote um, from Freire. No, no, this is not. This is um, from McIntyre. Um, facilitates quote an over, overall demystification. Love that word, right? Overall demystification of what research is and how it can relate to people's lives. Um, shout out to uh, McIntyre for that line, right? That's really, it, it, like you know you can go in and be like, oh, I'm the I'm the learned uh, researcher, and today we're going to uh, do something very very complicated and I'm going to present this information to you in a completely mystified sense and you'll be bewildered and all that I will be doing is to show how smart I am and how dumb you are, right? Uh, that's really whack research, right? It's like, nah, it demystifies research. Dude, I'm a regular guy. I watch, I, you know, I play Xbox and I like to slack off and I do my work, but you know, yeah, I'm a regular dude and hey, I got a couple ideas. You got some ideas? Let's try and make this work. It really is like that. It really is like that, and it's not disrespect to the community of research, but that's what research really is. If you think it's more than that, then you're a little pompous, right? Because research is like, dude, I got some ideas. I got a couple ideas. Um, I think I, you know, I heard that there might be something going on in this community, and I think I might have some ideas how it might help. What do you think? Well, the community is going to say, well, what are your ideas? Here's my ideas. Well, you know, that's really not going to work because of these other factors. It's really going to test you as a researcher if you're going to be the type of pompous sort of ass to be like, no, you're wrong. How could you challenge me? I've had all of the schooling, and clearly that's the reason why you guys are, your community is failing, right? No, it, you know, we want to demystify research, dude. It's just, research is, it's, it's dialogical, it's dialectical, rather. It's dialectical, it's based in conversation. Let's sit down and have a conversation. Let's talk. What's, what's wrong? Let me see what I can do, and, you know, what would you want me to do, and I'll give you the little expertise that I have. I'll, I'll let you know, right? So it's a demystification. I really, really like that, right? Um, quote, an overall demystification of what research is and how it can relate to people's lives. First of all, we demystify the research. It really isn't this hocus-pocus, super difficult stuff. No matter what type of research you're doing, you can figure it out with enough years of training. right? Um, 
my logic videos will attest to that, right? You know, people, oh, I can never figure that. Well, enough training and, and, and good instruction and a lot of patience, and you'll, you'll figure out something that is quote-unquote complicated, right? So I like the demystification part. The other part that I really like is how research relates to people's lives. There's this ongoing myth that what academics do is we write in esoteric journals. Like, you'll see this all the time, and I'm not going to digress because I, this really pisses me off. But there's this like this new approach to this business model of education, right? And it's like, oh well, instructors need to show that what they're doing is, you know, generating revenue for the university and the business model. And that's a crock. All of that is crap, right? Because the thing is, we don't arrive at ideas like, like, um, like um, Darwin's theory of evolution. We don't arrive at ideas of um, social constructivism, of uh, post-colonial theory. Um, you don't arrive at these overnight, right? These ideas don't bubble up overnight. They don't bubble up by one scholar, right? These ideas are a contribution of a community of scholars critically engaged in each other's work. Real scholars read other scholars. No real scholar only reads his or her own work, right? My scholar is 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 conditioned on the, the guys that I like to read. And, I, you know, I'm not going to give shout-outs to the guys I like to read a lot, but... You know, there's a lot of genocide theorists that I really love to read, the stuff that they write. Everything that they write, I'm reading it. I, mean, I like their tone, I like their vibe, I like how much, you know. I, you know. And my stuff is, is, is going to be, hopefully, um, you know, engaging to other people. And we share these ideas. So the whole thing is, it's not just that it's a demystification. The second part is that it relates to people's lives. The research that I'm doing today might not directly affect your life, but the reason why I'm doing this research is because, especially participatory action research, is because I am genuinely trying to make this community better. And I'm not trying to do it because it's some obligation or burden that I have, but hey, you got one life to live, why not try and make the world a better place, right? So participatory action research on that level um, functions to demystify research, right? It's accessible, it makes research accessible. And it also shows you that, no, what we do as researchers really does have an, am, uh, an impact in, um, in affecting people's lives for the better. So demystification, uh, bum, 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 bum. my brain is fried, D-E-M, D-E-M-Y-S-T-I-F, demystification and impact. Is that it? Um, yeah, so that's it for that. All right, so the next point is that um, participants and researchers become, quote, subjects of their own history. And we know what that means, right? The researcher becomes a participant. The participant becomes a researcher. I am, in a sense, archiving in participatory action research. I mean, and, and this is why I really, really like her book. She's archiving in this. She does the sh theoretical spiel for maybe 20, 30 pages. Then she talks about her ed experience, in a, if I remember, in education, right? So she talks about her cases, right? So what you do is you go, and I, I, don't, I need to be careful on cases because her research, what you do in participatory action research, in, in a sense, you're, you're archiving yourself, right? Because you're part of the research. You know, when I was there, um, I really think it should be first person account. You know, if my students write it, other professors might change, you know, you have to write in a third person or sort of uh, omniscient narrate or something. But I, I like the first person, you know, while I was on the ground, here's what I saw, my you know, working with the community organizer allowed me to dot, 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 dot. My discussion with her led to dot, 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 dot. We agreed that dot, 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 dot. Like that type of tone um, recognizes that, you know, the research that I'm doing is, is motivated by my participation, our participation in the research. 